Thank you for watching the Momentum Men's Ministry on the Man page. Today, you will hear a message from Deacon J. Drummond on Why Do I Need the Church? Part 5. We Strengthen One Another. Now, prepare your hearts and minds for the scripture and the message for today. Enjoy. Uh, this is coming from the uh, King James Version, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 through 21. For ye were sometimes darkness, but are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and having no fellowship with the unfruitful work of darkness, but rather prove them. For, in, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But as all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever does make manifest is light. Wherefore be, he said, awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Seeing then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein it's excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourself in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord giving thanks always for all things unto God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourself one to another in the fear of God. This is the word of the Lord. Our lesson today, um, why I need the church, we're looking at uh, the fifth lesson uh, in this series, why I need the church. We've already heard from uh, Reverend Ron and Reverend Gary and Deacon Daryl and Derek um, they showed us in the book of Ephesians how we are joined together, how we pray for one another, how we support one another and encourage one another. I want to talk about strengthening one another. And Mark will complete our study uh, when we come back in the new year. <clears throat> the book of Ephesians seems to be uh, or seems to provide the church with a concise summary of God's plan of salvation and to encourage believers to live in unity in the faith. It talks a lot about spiritual blessing, unity, and relationships. The letter focuses on energizing the church for serving the higher call of God's purpose. And Paul makes the case that God gives people the gift of salvation, not for their own desires, but to join in fulfilling his work. As we look further into the second half of the book, Paul talks specifically about living out this higher calling, and that brings us to um, our subject. Uh, next slide. So let, let's, let's pray, and then we'll get into the lesson. Father God, we thank you for this day. We ask God that you would prepare us to hear and that you would speak to us concerning your church and concerning this fellowship and concerning the church without walls. In our lives as Christians, Lord, help us to be better. Lord, help us to live out the purpose you have for each of us and for us collectively. Lord, remove any fear, any anxiety, any reservations, Lord, that you might speak and we might hear clearly. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Questions to ask yourself as we go through this lesson. Um, what do we mean by strengthening one another? What, well, the question could be said this way. How do we strengthen each other to live our best life in Christ according to God's plan? Someone made a, a, an excellent uh, suggestion last week when they asked, can we see some of the questions before the lesson? So here are some of the questions to think about <clears throat> as we go through the lesson. When has another Christian really had your back during a struggle, a crisis, <clears throat> or a storm? How did that make you feel? What are some ways culture tries to confuse darkness and light, and how can your life expose the deeds of darkness? What are some specific ways you can honor God with your time? What does it look like 
for us to submit to one another as believers? How have you seen that lived out in a practical way? Next slide. Mm -hmm. Here's, I want, here's what I want you to get out of this lesson. We strengthen each other when we are light, Ephesians 5, 8 through 14. We strengthen each other when we are wise, Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. We strengthen each other when we are filled with the spirit, Ephesians 5, 18 through 21. Next slide. We strengthen each other when we are light, Ephesians 5, 8 through 14. Live as light, beware of bad fruit and the light of the gospel. Live as light, verses eight through 10. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, and find out what pleases the Lord. Light is a, a metaphor used throughout the Bible. And you begin to grasp its meaning at the very beginning of the book in Genesis, when into the emptiness and darkness, God said, let there be light on day one of creation. His voice called it into being, called life into existence. You begin to grasp the joy, the goodness, the kindness, the glorious act of God. First John says that God is light. Jesus said, let your light shine. This scripture, Paul reads, that we're reading today, Paul says, but you are now light, tells us to live as light, live a life that reflects God. Even knowing that you have a past, you were once empty, you were once darkness, you were once callous, cold-hearted, unforgiving, Paul says here, live as children of light. Godliness, goodness, righteousness, truth are reflections of light that gives life but not just for yourselves. Your goodness, righteousness, and truth are fruit that begets fruit. Your light encourages others to let their light shine also. This sounds a lot like Galatians 5.22, where Paul says the fruit of the spirit are love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness. You know how that goes. Mm -hmm. Surely this must be talking about how we act toward one another. I don't think we need scripture to tell us how to love ourselves or be kind to ourselves. No, this is about how we act toward each other. And you can see the impact that your God life is having on others. You can always ask yourself the question, does this please God? And so the first part of our lesson, we suggest to you that you should choose light, choose not to sin, to live as light. Verses 11 through 12, beware of bad fruit. The contrast between light and darkness is made more clear in contrasting bad fruit to good fruit. Verse 11, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. Be, way, be aware of your actions. Be, beware of fruit of darkness. Beware of being fruitlessness. You might sin, confess it to God. Oftentimes we think we can simply change on our own. No, we can decide we are not going to do something and, and end up still doing it. It is the power of God to change us, but we have to want to change. We try to hide behind curtains and closets, behind locked doors in faraway places. We can hide from each other. We might even be able to hide from ourselves, but you can't hide from God. None of us are free from sin. But what we have learned to do is to not put ourselves in situations that cause us to stumble. We have learned to consume God's word and be accountable to someone we trust. Exposing means allowing God's word to shine into those dark places in your heart and in your mind. You have to get at the root of these issues. You have to get at the root of the sin that you might commit and you can get at the root of the sin that others commit if you allow your light to shine. The gospel is light. Everything exposed by light becomes visible and becomes light, verses 13 through 14. The gospel speaks to sin and transforms life, and there is no place where God's truth cannot penetrate. Hebrews 4, 12 through 13 
says the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. You are light. You have the power to wake up dead men and transform lives. Next slide. We strengthen each other when we are wise. Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. Be wise, verse 15. Commit your time, verse 16. And the Lord's plan, verse 17. We contrasted light and darkness. Now we contrast wise and foolish, verses 15 through 17. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Be wise, verse 15. James 3, 13 through 17 gives us a picture of wisdom. Who is wise and understanding among you, James says. Let them show it by their good life by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. It is not just ethical. Wisdom is not just ethical and moral. It is a recognition and a reverence for God. It is a fear or a deep reverence for the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Number two, commit your time, verse 16. We can already see the contrast that the wise person makes. They make the most of every opportunity. They make time to serve God and his fellow man. Even how you treat strangers and outsiders, according to Colossians 4 and 5, uh, is, a, is a reflection of your Christian walk. The wise lives beyond the moment. The unwise have no plan, no strategy, and do not recognize opportunities to encourage, to exercise faith, to pray, to invite God into someone else's life. The foolish take none of that into account and only serve himself. And the third point about living wise, the Lord's plan, verse 17. Given the contrast of light and darkness, of wise and foolish, we make decisions in view of understanding God's intent. This is the key to how we strengthen one another. You may recall in your reading of Ephesians 1, or from the last four lessons, but specifically in Ephesians 1, 3 through 19, Paul sp spells out God's intent. It's our spiritual blessing, our redemption, the forgiveness of sin, unity, eternal security, and power. Next slide. Strengthen each other when we are filled with the Spirit. Ephesians 5, 18 through 21. Be filled with the Spirit, verse 18. Speak to one another, verse 19. Give thanks to God, verse 20. Submit to one another, verse 21. Scripture says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God, the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. <clears throat> this is our final contrast and capsulizes our life in Christ. Being drunk and being filled with the Spirit. This, this is verse 18. This at first may not seem like a contrast. We know that uh, or what being drunk means. It, it's a social problem to have a society with people who are not operating in their right minds. This is not to say everyone is drunk with wine. It may be a stretch to say some people are drunk with power or drunk with ambition. On an individual level, to be drunk would prevent you from being light or being wise. 
the word filled throws us off if you're just reading this scripture for the first time. But the meaning of being filled is to be controlled repeatedly as the occasion requires. The spirit empowers us for worship, for service, and for testimony. The contrast between being filled with wine and filled with the spirit shows two kinds of influences that powerfully affect people. To be filled with the spirit means to live continually under the, uh, the influence and control of the spirit. We choose out of love for God to yield completely to the Lord, obeying the commands he has set before us and asking the Holy Spirit to direct our lives. This should be an ongoing experience, not something that happens only once. It is good to keep in mind that the feeling speaks of control and not volume. This is a benefit of being a child of God and being born again. What happens when we are governed by the Holy Spirit? Well, our language changes. We speak to one another uh, differently. Verse 19, speak and sing encouragement in all varieties. We move from cursing to encouraging. Our encouragements strengthen me. Your encouragements strengthen me. Your worship strengthens me. And to be filled with the Spirit is to give thanks to God. Verse 20. Here's another one of those themes we see throughout the Bible. We are reminded often to give thanks. Philippians 1 and 3, Philippians 4 and 6, Colossians 1 and 3, 2 and 7, Colossians 3 and 15, and 4 and 2, 1 Thessalonians 3 and 9, and 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. Thanksgiving is the hallmark of the Christian. The spirit produces thanksgiving. And then finally, to, to, uh, to, be, to be filled with the spirit is to give thanks to God. And we are reminded uh, to give thanks, as I mentioned in all of those verses, and, and I'm happy to give those to you later. Uh, but our final point on being filled with the spirit is submitting to one another. This is clearly remarkable um, to set aside one's own interests out of love for another. And I don't, I don't think we, we really think about that too much. I mean, we, a lot of these things are sort of words that we hear, things that we say. But if you, if you think about how your life has changed over the last year, over the last five years, over the last decade, or how your life has changed over the entirety of your adulthood, how you um, have submitted yourself to um, a spouse or to a family uh, or to uh, responsibilities uh, at church, uh, to neighbors. You know, this is not something that we would do naturally. Uh, this is something that only comes from the power of the Holy Spirit. This is what submission means. And, and we do it out of love for God and in the power or ability of the Holy Spirit. When we submit by putting our own interests aside, we will see more unity in the body of Christ. We can fellowship and walk alongside another brother. We can give in some way when a need arises. And this is how we strengthen other believers. Next slide. So to come back to where we started, this is how we strengthen one another and what we should expect from one another. Number one, we can help one another stand firm against sinful ways. Ephesians 5, 8 through 14. We talked about light and darkness, right? You remember that. Mm -hmm. We can help one another make wise use of our time. Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. And we can strengthen one another as we are filled with the spirit. Ephesians 5, 18 through 21. Next slide. All right, so here's our questions we started with. <clears throat> and here's the questions I want you to think about some more. When has another Christian really had your back during a struggle, a crisis or a storm? How did that make you feel? What are some ways culture tries to confuse darkness and light? And how can your life expose the deeds of darkness? What are some specific ways you can honor God with your time? And what does it look like for us to submit to one another as believers? 
How have you seen that lived out in a practical way? Thank you for watching. If you would like to join one of our live sessions, then please go on Facebook, type in Momentum Men's Ministry, and like the Momentum Men's Ministry that has the gold M as its symbol. It will allow you to be able to get updated information daily or weekly about our live next session as well as some encouraging information. So join us every Saturday at 7.30 a.m. Central for the TCWW Momentum Men's Fellowship. Also watch us on Facebook, Instagram, or live.tcww.org for live worship each Sunday at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and 12 p.m. Log on to the Church Without Walls org for all church events announcements and giving thank you for listening and i pray you have a blessed day in jesus name amen